I'm rolling right now. This might actually work. Hey indie filmmakers, I'm Griffin Hammond, going retro today, filming in standard definition on one of my first cameras from 20 years ago. I just pulled this out of storage. I'm impressed that it actually works. I plugged it in, it's rolling. Uh, we're, we're getting video off of this thing right now. And I'm noticing right away that it looks way overexposed on the LCD, but luckily I have this thing plugged into my computer and it's properly exposed down here. Uh, so I will show you in a moment how I've managed to take this old camera and get it plugged into my modern iMac. Uh, and I'm also gonna tell you all the, of the features of this Sony TRV320 Handycam from the year 2000. I bought this when I was 16 years old. But first I just wanna talk about some of the quirks of shooting and editing video 20 years ago using a standard definition camera and some of the weird issues that we had to deal with that luckily, if you've come of age now shooting on high definition cameras, you just haven't had to, to learn some of these weird quirks. So the first thing is we're shooting in a four by three aspect ratio, like old televisions. And that was fine. Didn't look very cinematic. Although if you go back far enough, movies were shot in this aspect ratio. The weird thing about this is the number of pixels. It's 720 pixels across and 480 pixels down, which if you're watching YouTube, you might notice sometimes the number 480p, which is talking about vertical resolution. So if you're watching a video in 480p, you are probably watching it in the same vertical resolution, but it's probably widescreen these days. The weird thing is the number 720, because if you do the math, if you take 480, that's the that's the three side of the four by three aspect ratio. So if we take 480 and divide it by three and then multiply it by four, you would think we'd get 720, but we don't, we get 640. And that's a weird little quirk of standard definition video is that pixels today are just square pixels. Uh, but pixels in standard definition on a standard definition television are actually a little bit skinny. They have a pixel aspect ratio, which is a, a phrase you wouldn't need to know today, but a pixel aspect ratio of 0 0.9, meaning that they are, you know, an aspect ratio of one tall, but 0.9 wide. So they're a little tiny bit skinny, which means that when you shoot this and you play this on a TV, it looks normal because it's shooting in... 0.9 pixels and playing them back in 0.9 pixels. But when we made the switch over from television to internet, which was kind of happening around the year 2000, all our videos would look a little bit too wide. People would look a little bit too fat because you were playing these skinny pixels on a square pixel monitor. And today all TVs are pretty much just computer monitors. So you shoot in high definition, you play it back in high definition, it all looks normal. Uh, but you had to account for that. So even today, sometimes you'll see this in archival films if someone has taken some standard definition footage and maybe they're an editor that didn't know that that's how it used to be. I sometimes catch the video that's just a little bit too wide. It's like 10% too wide. So really, you want to take this frame, if you were taking a still frame from it or putting this on the internet, uh, you'd want to take it from 720, maybe in Photoshop, and bring it down to 640. Um, although... I'm noticing that Final Cut, which I'm using to import this video right now, seems to be dealing with it in a normal aspect ratio. You know, 20 years later, <laughs> the software seems to understand uh, what we're gonna do with this video, that we're gonna put it on the internet, not on a television that doesn't exist anymore. Uh, the other weird thing about video coming off of a camera like this is that all the frames will be interlaced, which just means that every frame is, is a mixture of the frame before it, 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 it's kind of like, you notice it when you do quick movement. I can see the interlacing right now on my screen. It's little jagged lines that show up because it's mixing one frame with the next frame, uh, putting like every other pixel is from the frame before, frame after. Uh, it's supposed to smooth motion. So when I do things like this, it doesn't look crazy on TV. It looks kind of smooth. But if you pause it, then you see the little jagged edges. Let me also tell you about how I'm getting this video onto my computer right now. It's it's amazing that I've collected all these different adapters over the years and I'm, I'm amazed that they actually all work together because 
These cameras used a, a digital transmission format called FireWire, FireWire 400, or we also refer to it as IEEE 1394, uh, which is the, the protocol here. It's a tiny four pin FireWire connector going out. And I have an adapter that takes me from a four pin FireWire 400 to a FireWire 800, which came out a few years later. And some of my computers and some of my hard drives still use FireWire 800. Uh, Max used to, iMax used to have FireWire 800. They don't anymore. Now, then they started using Thunderbolt. So I got a FireWire 800 to Thunderbolt adapter. Uh, but my most modern iMac Pro that I use for work doesn't even have Thunderbolt anymore. So I got a Thunderbolt to USB-C adapter. So I have like three adapters going to get me from FireWire 400 all the way up to the modern standard of USB-C. And amazingly, it works. Yeah, I'm recording in Final Cut right now and it's, uh, it's, it's importing the video straight off this camera. So I think I'm gonna try to use this camera as a zoom camera and see if my coworkers notice that I'm, I'm filming in this, this old format. So let me tell you about some of the, the features of the Sony Handycam uh, TRV320. Besides the IEEE 1394 interface, this camera also shoots on digital eight, which is tape. So digital standard definition format, but uh, on a high eight tape, putting a digital signal on there. Um, so this is kind of like a little VCR built into this camera. You have to push play and rewind and imagine that when you start recording, you need to make sure you're not recording over your previous video, uh, which if you weren't shooting video 20 years ago, you just, you don't have to deal with that problem. So this camera has a special feature on it called end search, which is an improvement over old VHS cameras. End search just lets you find the end of where you were recording because it's a digital signal on that tape. It can, go find it so it would it would fast forward or rewind to take you to the part where you should be recording this camera has sony steady shot technology so some image stabilization built in um, it's got infrared which is something that you don't see a lot of in modern cameras i, I don't think i've seen infrared in in any modern dslr but it's got a lamp right here underneath the lens that shoots out infrared light and it has a night vision mode. So it lights you up with this invisible lamp and then uh, can, can record the signal. It also has an intelligent shoe on top, which you could plug all sorts of accessories into. And one of them was a little lamp to add some light, but also this gives you more infrared lamps so you could do even more powerful night vision. This camera has a swivel mounted 2.4 inch LCD, which I'm noticing now for the first time is way too bright. It makes me, it makes everything look like it's overexposed. My biggest question was when I turned this thing on, I didn't even remember how to, <laughs> how to change the settings. So here, let me show you how that went. All right, so I just turned this thing on with its little thumb dial here on the back. I remember where that is, but as I start to play around with this thing, I realize I don't really remember most of the functions on here. It does have a little auto or manual focus switch here and you can you can focus with the ring on front. But the first question I have when I turn this thing on is I don't remember how to set exposure. There is a little exposure button and a little dial that definitely is changing the darkness and brightness. But I can't remember where to find white balance or aperture or shutter speed. And so I did a quick search in the manual for white balance and I don't see anything. And I'm realizing this camera that I shot on for 10 years, I don't even think I knew what white balance was when I was in high school. I guess this camera just doesn't even have it. I'm realizing it has some program modes that kind of change the color. So you can, I guess you can kind of choose a white balance, but I guess you're always kind of in auto white balance, auto aperture. Uh, you're kind of, you're kind of stuck with what it gives you. It, that's what I worked with for a long time. And I should mention why Nick is not here today. He had a work emergency come up. So I decided I would play with my old camera by myself. I do want to take a moment to thank our sponsor Squarespace. 
Hey Indie Filmmakers is brought to you by Squarespace. From websites to online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your filmmaking business. So I've been doing a lot of 1980s video editing recently for my job, and I just can't believe what is missing from the internet sometimes, like important political events you would expect live online somewhere just are just have completely vanished. They're probably sitting in a library somewhere. So at least with my podcast, it's not the most important historical document, but every episode is on my website at hey.film, which is a Squarespace design website. So I'm doing my part to create a historical record and, and keep it on the internet for you. Check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash griffin for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. It's also got 25x optical zoom. <laughs> but I have no idea what aperture this camera is at. I, I don't even know. Actually, no, it does say. It says uh, 3.7, f3.7. Then I feel like it also says, it also says 1.6. It kind of seems like maybe it's a 1.6 when it's zoomed out. I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea what aperture this is. It doesn't tell you on the screen when you're shooting. It doesn't tell me what shutter speed I'm, I'm shooting at. Uh, so yeah, I realized going back, I, I just had no sense of these things in high school when I was filming with this camera. I think I mostly just discovered with this camera that when you zoomed it in all the way, the background went out of focus, uh, which is just learning about how zoom works. Like if I wanted to get shallow depth of field, all I could do was, was zoom way in on my, my subject. So I kind of shot everything that way with, with these extreme close ups. The remote still works. <laughs> That's one cool thing about this camera that you don't get on a modern camera is it does have a remote, just an infrared remote uh, with zoom in, zoom out on it. <laughs> I, I want to say this is a this has been a successful experiment. I was not sure if I'd be able to get this camera, first of all, plugged into the computer and imported through Final Cut. I think I could do this through Premiere as well. Um, but I'm, I'm honestly impressed that this is working. And once I import this through Final Cut, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, this may be a standard definition source video, but I have framed it in a timeline, a 1080p timeline. So. We're taking standard definition, weird pixel aspect ratio video, interlaced frames, but mashing it into its correct aspect ratio for the internet inside a 1080 frame. So this would be much smaller in the middle, but I'm stretching it up to the top. Uh, and then I'm also shooting in 4K. So I'm taking the 4K video and mashing it down uh, four times smaller into a, a 1920 by 1080 frame. To, to mix these these formats together. So thank you for, for joining me for this experiment. And let me know in the comments if you have any great ideas for what I should be doing with this still operational 20 year old standard definition camcorder. Should work, we're rolling, we're rolling, we're rolling. And there we go, it's, it's gonna be a tiny file. Hey there. <laughs>